the revolution took to the streets. But it may have started at the table when food prices began skyrocketing for the more than 40 percent of Egyptians living on less than two dollars per day. As well as the country's young, educated, and unemployed middle class. And it isn't just Egypt. Around the world, where there are a billion people who are uh, already hungry, they spend more than half of their money on food. So these these kinds of huge world crop price increases can translate into 20 or 30 percent or more increases in their cost of food. From Tunisia to Haiti, inflationary food prices are leading to protests and contributing to revolutions. Young people who no longer can afford uh, protein for themselves, they can't afford f fresh vegetables for themselves, middle class parents can't afford to feed their children milk. This is when people get very angry. This is when people take to the streets. Clearly this is a part of the, a part of the whole. There's no question. Food prices rapidly rising beyond the levels of the 2008 food crisis are forcing Americans to make tough decisions at the cash register too. If the price keep going up, then we have to, re have to learn how to improvise and do things on sale, like I say. Because it's going up, we didn't get a raise, food going up, everything going up. And everything means basic staples like milk, beef, coffee, and cereal, which rose 5% in the last few months alone. The cereal, the breakfast food, all that stuff is going to the roof. Every time I go inside, I smell like $250, and I don't get a lot of food. I mean, if I want to eat healthy food. But decisions about who pays and how much aren't made at the register, says journalist Frederick Kaufman. Imaginary wheat being bought and sold by financial giants is controlling the price of, uh, of real wheat. They're made on Wall Street by big investment firms who distrust dollars and euros and instead hedge their bets on commodities. Who's winning? Right, you got it. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, the largest holders, the largest financial dealers in this, they're doing very well. As the U.S. pushes producers to convert corn crops to ethanol, the crisis deepens around the world. Demand for biofuels has tripled over the past six years and will triple again by 2020. Growing demand for biofuels, almost doubling the challenge of increasing the amount of food we have to produce for people. And the farmers are having a tough time keeping up. But Americans aren't as eager to push frustrations from the grocery store to the streets. For Americans to do that, it take a whole lot. You know, we haven't got sick and tired of being sick and tired yet, but when we get there, we'll do it. $13.9 billion in cuts to food stamp programs over the next three years means that the average American family will receive $59 less per month, bringing less food to their tables. But it's unclear whether it will also bring them out in the streets. Keelan Ford, RT, Washington, D.C.